Hello everybody and welcome back to the NS Jackie Wheel Switching Layout. So before this year comes to a close end, I decided to do a short update on the current state of the modules and the layout. So uh, for those of you who follow um, the Jackie Wheel Switching Layout on Facebook know that we had our first modular meeting uh, with the guys from the club. Um, and from the modular group. Uh, it was a full success, we had lots of fun and it was cool to run trains from point A to point B rather than only on these four meters of modules. Um, it was pretty cool to, to set up everything and have some trains run with the guys. So uh, before we had that first meeting I did uh, the first two layers of steady grass on the layout. Um, first I did a two millimeter layer and then a four mil layer. Uh, it's all steady grass uh, from RTS Greenkeeper. I like the product, uh, the colors, and so uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, there is still a lot to do on the scenery side uh, of the modules. However, also I worked in the meantime on the, on the main building here. Um, as you guys might remember, originally I planned to do a bakery. However, I switched over to a plastic company, a plastic manufacturing company. Um, these are the silos and also here are some additional silos and these silos that I bought originally from Walders were the main reason why I switched over to a plastic manufacturing company uh, because these silos didn't uh, really look prototypical for a, for a floor or grain or sugar terminal um, so these are more convincing so that I can use them for a plastic pallet transfer and that is what I decided to do so I have some Atlas 5660 cubic feet pressure aid covered hoppers. Those are originally from the BLMA tooling. I have, uh, I think, six to eight cars of those, um, which can be used here for the loading and unloading, um, unloading the pallets into the silos and the silos pump them over to the company itself. And here they are gonna um, load the, the plastic products of all sorts into box cars. And that allows for a variety of different cars. Here the pressure aid, uh, hoppers and then over here we are gonna use some box cars. I'm looking forward to that. I still have to weather all the cars and of course I have to finish the building itself. I just did the first paint layer. This is uh, Vallejo, Vallejo, however you want to call it, uh, acrylic paint. I did two or three layers of it. I am pretty happy um, with, the, with the brick color here. It turned out great. I'm gonna do some weathering on the building and of course I'm gonna add the doors and also the loading docks over here and then some ladders and fire escape over here and of course I have to finish uh, the additional four silos there. So um, I also have some of Tom Klimowski and Lance Mintheim's book about uh, shelf layouts and modular layout building and um, the more I read in those books the more I was unhappy with the scene over here. So you guys might remember that originally I had a, a concrete paved area in this gray color, like it is right here, all the way from here down to the end of the fourth module right there in this spot. I had all the same color and it looked like a, a big um, paved concrete area. I didn't really like it. And uh, also for, uh, for another effect, I decided uh, to do some, some changes here. So I decided to add some little hills here. And uh, once this has dried out completely, I'm gonna add a second layer of plaster. And once that had dried, I'm gonna paint everything here brown. And then I'm gonna cover it with static grass, with bushes and trees and weeds and stuff like that. Because I decided to add a little bit of variety to the scenery. So I wanted to make some sort of a cut from that uh, industrial part of the layout to the, to the team track, which is in the background there, and the scrap loading facility. Uh, I really didn't know how to make it, because otherwise I would have to add a river, a river of some sort, and I wasn't able to do that because uh, the module shelf is already done. So I decided to come up with, this, with, the, with the ID that we're gonna add a little forest or at least some trees over here and that adds for a visual cut between um, the two industrial parts of the layout. Uh, I think that is gonna look way better than like it is now with, 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 with the concrete paved area here. 
And that leads me to the next point. I still didn't do anything on the road crossing right here. I really have to, to push uh, forward this project and to finally finish this road crossing here. However, um, actually it was by accident. Uh, we're gonna switch sides here on the modules, just a second. So as I mentioned before, all the way from the end of the module, all the way up to here, it was the same grayish, bluish color like it is here. And I didn't really like it. Uh, I wasn't happy with the, with the after all effect, but I had no idea what to do. So I finally came up with an idea. I took an enamel based wash and I added this wash to the completed paved area all the way down to there. And it was actually somehow by accident. I took a brush bef before it dried out completely. I played around a little bit with the brush and then I noticed that um, using a brush I can uh, wash away some of the, the applied material and I came up with this final effect here. I am absolutely happy with how it turned out. Check this out. It really looks like a dirty industrial concrete um, grime mixture like it has originally been a concrete pad. However, with all the winters, with the harsh winters and the, and the ice, um, it started to, to, to make some cracks and to uh, to wash away some of the top concrete layer and uh, I'm pretty convinced with how it turned out. I absolutely love the effect how it is right now. So I'm gonna leave it that way and that's why I uh, stopped here uh, with this wash that I did because all the way up from here to the silos um, we will have the, the little forest like I mentioned before. And then as you can see I have some 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 hoppers here. Um, these are all three from, from Atlas. Uh, these cars I bought, I think, like two or three years ago. These were some of my first really, really dirty, rusty cars that I did. Uh, you can see a lot of, lot of um, dirt and grime and, and concrete juice and stuff like here on, on the sides. Uh, these cars show heavy, heavy use and effects of all the different materials that I had to, to transport from A to B. And um, since my era that I model is from 2008 all the way to 2018 and I stop at 2018, I had to adjust a little bit with my car. So these cars are in service since a couple of years. However, this car over here is pretty new. It came out of the paint booth uh, just a couple of months or years ago. That's why the car itself is pretty clean so far. It doesn't have really rust on its side. It just has some, some paint and dirt on the inside from the first couple loads. Uh, I also added a uh, Sergeant E-type couplers to all these hoppers over here. And then I also added some of the couplers to this, uh, to this NS Jivo. This is a DC Jivo, it's 7505. And then I also added uh, some Sergeant couplers to these cars right here. I'm gonna show you these ones here next. We're gonna uh, switch sides here again. So these cars really turned out great. The, this is an Atlas Pressure 8 covered hopper. I think this is also, also originally by PLMA when they bought up their tooling. However, I'm not sure on that. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The car is absolutely beautifully detailed. I really like how it turned out with all these effects, with the washes from top to down and also on, on the top area here. This car has been heavily used uh, in the cement transport for Roanoke cement. I'm gonna use this car in service here. I also added some E-type couplers on both ends. Uh, these are search and E-type couplers. And then uh, we are going over to the next one here. This is a six axle DODX military flat car. So this car has just uh, recently been finished. I really like how it turned out. Um, the, the effects on, on the top of it um, look like the, the worn and torn use of the everyday heavy transport of, of tanks and uh, military equipment of all sorts. And then I also did some weathering, of course, to the trucks and to the wheels. Um, not really much has been done on the underside because mostly you can see the top side of these cars, of course. Um, however, I ordered some 3D printed parts and vehicles. Uh, one of them is this uh, Striker Dragoon vehicle. Uh, the Dragoon, as you guys might know, is the latest version of the Striker infantry vehicle currently in use with the US Army. And uh, since I served myself in the military and we use the Piranha 3, which is the 
the older version of a striker it's the swiss version of the striker vehicle we used piranha 3 uh, when i was back in the military in the infantry and uh, of course there are a lot of uh, funny uh, memories with these vehicles however this is the latest version currently in use with u.s armed forces as i said this is the dragoon i ordered a couple more of them so that i i can uh, add some loads to the cars this is a 3d printed uh, tank I had to, to um, prime and paint everything and assemble the whole uh, vehicle. Uh, it is online from a gentleman in Germany who makes all sorts of different 3D printed uh, military vehicles um, from also from the German army, but of course mostly for US army, um, which I use mostly here. And then also I have these resin kits, which are not finished by now. I have two of them. Uh, I bought them like two years ago. These are from Arsenal M. Uh, they are no longer uh, available, unfortunately, because Arsenal M uh, sees the procedure of uh, the production of, uh, of the resin kits. They only offer the plastic kits. Um, so these are not available anymore. However, um, I'm going to do these two vehicles. They are not finished again. You can see the windows are still masked. Uh, the, the, the tracks are not painted so far, so there is a lot of work to do. But I... Uh, gonna show you so this this military transport is gonna look like that with all sorts of different vehicles i try to buy mostly vehicles that are used by u.s army uh, so that i don't have to mix it up with vehicles used by the marines or navy or whatever uh, i really try to stick with u.s army vehicles i ordered a couple of mrap cougar 6x6 uh, mrap vehicles and also uh, a lot of different trucks the the fmtv and lmtv uh, trucks by US Army both armored and unarmored version I'm gonna do a review of them once once they they are here in Switzerland and once I painted and finished them then I showed you the locomotive I really just placed it there because I did some switching earlier today uh, because this locomotive is also already outfitted with the search and D type couplers again you can see here the this new effect I really like how it turned out then let's go over here to something real special. So this is the first and only Otter Valley uh, CN pipe car that I have so far. Uh, a friend of mine did an order and then we agreed to do a group order. So that allowed us to split uh, shipping costs between um, everybody that ordered something. I ordered one of these CN pipe cars. These are from OVR from Otter Valley Railroad in Ontario or Tilsonburg, Canada, I guess. Um, the detailing of these cars is absolutely stunning. I absolutely love this car. I should have ordered more. Um, I'm not sponsored in any way by any of the companies. You know that. I really just um, try to show you guys. I mean, this car is absolutely fantastic. It looks awesome. I added smoke box reflecting safety stripes and I added a, a lower shelf uh, coupler by Searchant here. And then uh, in the same order, I had ordered some of these Cardella scrap trash gondolas here. Uh, originally when they have been announced I, I really wish to, to order like 30 of them because uh, I waited ages for these cars to come uh, show up in, in HO scale. Now we finally have them. I absolutely love them. I have three of these Cardella cars. I did a little bit of weathering so I weathered them inside and a little bit on the lower area here on the trucks and wheels because you guys remember as I mentioned before I really model from 08 to 2018 and these cars showed up in early 2018 for the first time so I really did just uh, just a basic weathering not much you can see it also is a little bit shiny um, after the matte coat I applied some gloss coat over over the sides of the cars except for the inside of course the inside shows a little bit worn and torn from everyday service but again these cars are not rusty in any way they're brand new fresh out of the paint booth and um, they really have uh, just a little bit of grime on the sides on the lower areas and some kick up but really not much and i did uh, three of them i tried to order the lower numbers so this is 08 05 and 03 these are the lowest numbers that i could get um so that I can uh, still stick to the prototype from 2008 all the way to 2018, as I explained before. And also recently, um, a shipment of some vehicles arrived. So I have this little trailer here. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to use this one for, maybe for some maintenance of way. Um, you can place this these ramps here in a loading-unloading position if you prefer. Um, this is a great looking car. 
I really had to, to apply some matte coat because it was really shiny. You couldn't even see all the details on the sides here. So I added some little bit of pan pastels and then sealed it in with the matte coat. And then also we have these little forklifts here. And these are gonna be placed uh, somewhere on the loading track, maybe, maybe in the background here on the team track, um, or maybe here at the scrap yard, I'm not sure on that. And in the same order, we have this, uh, this Mercedes-Benz van. This is a US version. And there is no Mercedes-Benz star on the front grille. It looks more like, I don't know, like a Ford emblem. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe a company, maybe one of the big US manufacturers um, produce them in license from Mercedes. I really don't know. Maybe you guys uh, do know more about that. If so, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. Uh, I would love to, to get some information on it. Uh, it's a great looking man, van. I really like it. And then also I ordered this, um, this trailer here. So this is a low trailer. It allows for the transport of some maintenance of way vehicles. I thought maybe I'm going to use it like RJ Corman is going to bring a bulldozer um, for, a, for a site where a train has, has derailed or something like that. I'm not sure. I did a, Maybe the weathering was a little bit too much. It's too much dirt. Maybe I should have kept the, the car, the trailer a little bit cleaner. Um, however, I also I painted the, the lights in the back here. I added some lights and uh, again the same here. You can place these ramps um, to unload something or you can um, place them in this uh, in the in the ready to road uh, version so that you can you can drive the trailer uh, around the layout. And then uh, over here we have something funny. So this is a little Mercedes-Benz Vito. This is a police vehicle from the, from the local police department. Um, this is unit 516. I bought two of them because one of them is going to be shipped out to a friend of mine in the US um, as a surprise. Um, he asked for me to, to send him one of these vehicles and I was final, finally able to get a second one. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna send this out to the US. Um, why do they look a little bit different? That has uh, that has a couple of reasons. So when when I bought my original one, uh, this one here, uh, I noticed that on on the prototype the rims are silver steel color and not black. That was the first thing I changed, and then also I added a tiny little bit of washing all around the vehicle so that you can see the nooks and crannies on the roof a little bit better compared to the. Uh, to the fresh from the factory one and then the third little detail that I changed you can see on top here here is the light bar which flashes blue on both sides um, from the underside so I took the light bar away from the underside I added uh, with the sponge some some aluminum aluminum steel color because on the prototype patrol vehicle you cannot see through the light bar only from the sides but not from top to down because inside the light bar you have electronics and, and light bulbs and all that. So um, you can see here, you can see through the uh, to the roof, through the light bar, and that's not how the prototype uh, is looking. That's why I changed a little bit. So I think for the moment that was it with the, with the, with the update on the Jackie Wheel switching layout. Again, there is a still a ton of work to do. I have to add more and more and more grass layers here. I have to finish the road crossing area. I have to weather... 20 more of the DODX flat cars. I have to weather locomotives. There is a ton of load of work to do, but I look forward to that. Uh, in the meantime, I already can do some little switching from time to time. And uh, again, so the, the minor change was the, was the concrete paved area. I absolutely love how it turned out. Again, it was by accident, but sometimes we have to use these funny accidents to our advantage. Um, also, I ordered a couple more of these bumpers. I finished the first first uh, three of them. I did some weathering, some rust effects, some, some washing on the sides so that they look a little bit used. Maybe I'm going to use some ties across the rails in certain areas. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to use uh, bumpers everywhere. And we will see. So to give it a little bit of variety, I might going to use some, uh, some ties. And uh, we will see that. Um, I think I showed you guys everything for the moment, the weather cars, um, also these cars over here and then the ones here, uh, I showed you the main building, I think for the moment that's it. And the last little update here is on the 
stuff that I'm currently working on. I'm gonna add some tiny little bit of, um, of grime on the sides here, but mostly I'm gonna work on graffitis on these cars. I try to sell them. Um, I have six or seven of these. I try to, to weather them, add some, some graffiti, and then we will see maybe I find a, a buyer uh, for those to, to get some money together for, for the next projects. And uh, yeah, until then, I'm gonna make updates from time to time, as you guys know. Um, thank you very much for checking by the Jackie Will Switching Layout. Thank you everybody for all the followers that I have already. Um, please feel free to share this channel and this video with your friends. Um, feel free to give it a like if you want. Um, if you have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I check and respond to each and every one of the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you very much for, for joining me in today and I hope you have a great Christmas season, uh, some, uh, some great days uh, off from work hopefully and I hope you can spend some time with your family and beloved ones and of course I hope that you will have lots of model trains under the Christmas tree once Santa uh, comes by at the evening. All right, thank you very much. Have a great Christmas Eve. Have a great and happy new year. All the best to everybody. Thank you and goodbye.